A blazing car fire lit up the dark, cold night last Friday at 1510 11th Avenue Northeast, says Deputy Fire Chief Jerry Keynes. 26 firefighters, two equipment trucks, and a pumper were on the scene of a car fire at 5.31 p.m. and had the fire under control in just 15 minutes at 5.46 p.m. Foam and water were used to put out the fire that fully engulfed the front of a 2001 Buick. As you can see, the fire was quite large and because of the extensive damage, the cause of the fire is undetermined. Kane says the last time the vehicle had been used was half an hour before the fire was noticed. Tax season has struck again, but this time North Dakota will be offering some assistance. North Dakota Tax Commissioner Corey Fong says tax tips can now be found on YouTube. The videos offer how-to tips and other messages about filing state income taxes. North Dakota has used YouTube to help answer commonly asked questions before, such as whether or not to use an online service. Fong says the videos are about a minute long and will run through April 15th. Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, who was wounded in a shooting attack one year ago, announced her resignation from the Congress over the weekend. Saying she needs to focus on health issues, Giffords released statements on her website, YouTube, and through her Twitter account saying, quote, I have more work to do on my recovery, so to do what is best for Arizona, I will step down this week. Representative Giffords was shot in the head in the attack, which also claimed the lives of six and wounded 13 others on January 8, 2011, during a meet and greet event in Tucson, Arizona. Widely expected to coast to re-election, Giffords' decision leaves a void in the Arizona delegation, which will be filled during a special election on a date yet to be determined. Former Penn State University football coach Joe Paterno has died after a long battle with lung cancer. Paterno, who was fired by the university's board of trustees in the wake of a sex scandal involving a former assistant coach, held the record for most wins by an NCAA football coach subdivision coach, surpassing former record holder Eddie Robinson of Grambling State University in what would be the final victory of a storied career. Paterno was accused of not reacting quickly or strongly enough to a sexual abuse scandal involving former assistant coach Jerry Sandusky, his previously anointed successor. After announcing his retirement to be effective at the end of the season, Paterno was fired on November 8th. According to a statement from his family, Paterno died early Sunday at age 85. Now, let's take a look at the winter weather with Jessica Golseth. Thanks, Beth. Welcome back. This weekend, we had some bad weather. A few accidents did occur. When we get freezing rain as well as snow overnight, it gets hard to keep the roads clean. And when the snow blows like it did, it gets hard to see as well. But overall, not a bad weekend. Today was a little cloudy. We reached a high of 17 degrees. And tonight, we'll clear up a bit with a low around 2 degrees. Tomorrow, we'll get a quick break with a temperature at 29 degrees. And it should be sunny most of the day. But Wednesday will bring us freezing rain once again. It will start at about noon and only last a few hours. Right now it's about a 20% chance of precipitation, but we'll see a high of 37 degrees with a mostly sunny sky. There will be some wind, but no more than usual. And then as night rolls around, the weather will calm and we'll see a low around 21 degrees. Thursday could be a bit of a complicated day, a high in the 30s with a 20% chance of snow before noon, and then a slight chance of snow and freezing rain between noon and 2, and then again just a chance of snow after 2 with a chance of some light rain mixed in there. As of now, Friday is clear with a high in the upper 20s. I would say overall the week will be very warm. The overnight lows will stay positive and for most days we'll see temperatures in the upper 20s, low 30s. The snow and freezing rain will, of course, be something to be cautious of when driving. And that's all the weather for today, Jamestown. Now back to you, Beth. Thanks, Jessica. Looking forward to those warmer temperatures. Apple is finally joining the electronic textbook market. iBooks 2, a free app for reading interactive full-screen digital textbooks that makes use of video and animations, was unveiled Thursday in New York by Phil Schiller, Apple's Senior Vice President for Worldwide Marketing iBooks Author was also announced. iBooks Author is a free software application for Apple computers that allows authors to create and publish their own digital textbooks. This software would make creating digital textbooks easy for everyone, not to mention the free software might make textbooks much more affordable. Apple isn't the only company attempting to create more options for students. No, Inkling and Course Smart are lesser known companies trying to make names for themselves in the market. Digital textbooks are not limited to college courses. 
Many companies are trying to create interactive books for use in high school and elementary classrooms. Next, let's take a look at sports with Josh Berg. Thank you, Beth. The Jamestown Blue Jay boys basketball team suffered its third loss of the season on Saturday. They lost to Minot for the second time this season, 57-66. Minot knocked the Blue Jays off their seventh game winning streak and possibly their number three ranking in the state. The Blue Jays are scheduled to play next Tuesday in Mandan. The DAC midseason tournament champions were crowned this weekend. The Jimmy men defeated Mayville Comets in the championship game 66-53, and the Jimmy women took down their rival Valley City State 61-60. The men improved their record to 19-4 as the women improved theirs to 20-3. Further news in sports, the men's and women's track teams were active this weekend. The teams competed down in Aberdeen, South Dakota, picking up eight first place finishes between the men and the women. Duran Johnson and Trent Remick stay unbeaten in the 400 and the 55 meter hurdles. Maddie Hornig also perfect on the season in the 800 as well. The Jimmy wrestling team shorthanded this weekend but did very well placing six wrestlers. Marlon Branson was a big time performer in the Jimmys taking the tournament. This is Branson's sex, second straight title at 165 pounds. Daniel Taylor and Jacob Miller also ended the tournament with two third place finishes. Well that's our weekend recap for sports and if you didn't get to watch any football last night it will be the Patriots and the Giants playing in the Super Bowl. Both of those games of course were decided by last second field goals. Well that's a rack up. Go Jimmies and back to you Beth. Thanks Josh. Tune in tomorrow when we continue to connect the campus with the community. I'm Beth Ryan. Good night, Jamestown.